All right, class. So this is another representation of the heart. <coughs> Looks like something alien. But I have drawn here the human heart. And you can see the upper two chambers, right atrium and left atrium, and the lower two, lower two ventricles. Now, what is most important in this diagram is that in between the atria and the ventricles, do you see a partition like this area right here? This part, this structure that separates the atria from the ventricle, this is called fibrous, fibrous skeleton. Okay, this is called the fibrous skeleton. And this fibrous skeleton has multiple roles the most important being it insulates the atria from the ventricles there is an electrical insulation between the atria and the ventricles which is provided by this fibrous skeleton apart from that this fibrous skeleton also helps uh, also acts as attach attachment site for cardiac muscles the fibrous skeleton holds the bi and the tricuspid valves. So the bi and tricuspid valves are um, embedded in the fibrous skeleton. Okay, now let's move on. And uh, on the PowerPoint, there is one specific slide that talks about the different functions of the fibrous skeleton. Just know them from the PowerPoint. Okay, now this is looking at the diagram. <coughs> from your textbook uh, it's looking at the internal heart anatomy and we will start with the chambers and the valves now on top this chamber is a right atrium this chamber is a left atrium and this chamber is the right ventricle this chamber is the left ventricle so these are the four chambers of the heart all right, now looking at the four valves of the heart, in between the right atrium and the right ventricle, this white colored valve is called the tricuspid valve. In between the left atrium and the left ventricle, this white colored valve is called the bicuspid valve. Remember, we try before we buy. Then at the base of the pulmonary trunk, so this is pulmonary trunk, At the base of pulmonary trunk, we have pulmonary semilunar valves. And at the base of aorta, do you see the red tube originating here? This is the aorta. And at the base of aorta, we have the white aortic valve. So that's aortic and this is pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay. <coughs> As the pulmonary valve opens, blood, push, blood is pushed into the pulmonary trunk ultimately it goes to the pulmonary arteries to the lungs as the aortic semilunar valve opens up blood is driven into the aorta and gets distributed throughout the body we talked about this before okay now here this is another representation of the fibrous skeleton i usually never ever draw it this way because it's confusing but this is how every single textbook uh, draws the fibrous skeleton and this is actually how it looks like but to simplify things I just draw my alien heart structure okay now know that the fibrous skeleton is made up of dense regular connective tissue and in this picture do you see the all the white circular things like like all the white part that's fibrous skeleton and it's made up of dense regular connective tissue as i mentioned before it lies between the ventricles and the atria it anchors the heart valves and the heart muscles it works as the attachment point of heart muscles and most importantly this is the most important function of the fibrous skeleton it provides as an electrical insulation between the atria and the ventricle for this for the functions of the fibrous skeleton i want you to follow these five bullet points straight from the powerpoint straight from the powerpoint memorize okay blood flow through the heart we have talked about this before uh, one more time let's go over the powerpoint quickly um, remember blood flow through the heart is unidirection unidirectional meaning blood flows 
in one direction only for example blood will flow from the right atrium into the right ventricle via the tricuspid valve but the tricuspid valve never allows black back flow into the atrium okay heart, heart works as a two-sided pump the left side one pump and the right side one pump and <coughs> both either both side uh, pumps out the same volume of blood at the same time Okay, now one side, which is the right side, is responsible for pumping blood to the lungs and that is associated with pulmonary circulation as we talked about. And then the left side, <clears throat> sorry, my bad. Yeah, sorry. The right side pumps to the lungs and that is associated with the pulmonary circulation and the left side pumps blood to the rest of the body and that is associated with systemic circulation. We will focus on the structures associated with pulmonary circulation now and we will see, we will kind of go by all the structures that, <coughs> I'm so sorry, all the structures that start at the right atrium and then to the left atrium, to the pulmonary valves, pulmonary trunk, all the way to pulmonary veins. All right. All right. Let's get started. Now, this picture is showing you three things the superior vena cava which is here the inferior vena cava they both carry deoxygenated blood do you remember where from the superior vena cava brings all the deoxygenated blood well they bring the deoxygenated blood from the superior part of the body right from the upper extremities the inferior vena cava gets the deoxygenated blood from the inferior parts of the body and the deoxygenated blood or the oxygen poor blood is dumped into this chamber which is called the <clears throat> right atrium. Now remember there is another blood vessel that drains the heart itself that carries deoxygenated blood from the heart and dumps it into the right atrium that is called the coronary sinus. You cannot see the coronary sinus the vessel here. Uh, but you do see the opening of the coronary sinus. So this little red opening symbolizes the, um, or the, this little red opening, this little opening that I have marked with red actually is the opening of the coronary sinus that drains the heart itself. So from the right atrium, oh, a few other things that we find within the right atrium. In between the atria and the uh, in between the right atrium and the left atrium, there is this partition, and this partition is called interatrial septum. Uh, the general muscles of the atrium are called pectinate muscles, like all these muscles. And then, do you see this small depressed area? That's called fossa ovalis. Again, we will talk more about fossa ovalis during fetal circulation when we cover fetal circulation in lab. And the fossa ovalis is a remnant of fetal circulation. <clears throat> then the tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. It has three flaps as we know. <coughs> and the white structure is the tricuspid valve. These white strings, these are called chordae tendinae. And they attach to these finger-like muscles called papillary muscles. Okay, so from the right atrium, blood flows into the right ventricle. Ven right ventricle has thicker wall as compared to the atrium. And the ventricles are separated by interventricular septum as shown by this thin, by thick muscular partition. And the general muscles of the ventricle are called trabeculae carnae. And do you see all these muscles here? These are trabeculae carnae. These are not papillary muscles. Papillary muscles are very, very finger-like. Okay. So don't get confused between trabeculae carnae and papillary muscles. <coughs> In the right ventricle, we also see the papillary muscles, the finger-like muscles, and they anchor the cord-like structures called chordae tendinae that attach the tricuspid valves. Okay, and these valves actually prevent the cusps from pro pro prolapsing. 
all right from the so blood from the right man blood from the right atrium moved to the right ventricle from the right ventricle blood will move into the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary trunk is guarded by this valve called pulmonary semilunar valve and the pulmonary semilunar valve actually marks the end of the ventricle and it marks the beginning of the pulmonary trunk so the pulmonary trunk begins here okay and the pulmonary trunk then divides into two branches as you see and these two branches are called pulmonary arteries they carry blood into the lungs as you see here this is a human lung <clears throat> you see both the both sides of the lungs this is the right side this is the left side and in between the two lungs the heart is placed okay so we looked at the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries that carry oxygenated blood to the lungs let's imagine we have lungs here lungs lungs now from what happens in the lungs gaseous exchange right we talked about this carbon dioxide is dumped out oxygen is picked up and the freshly oxygenated blood comes back to the to the left atrium via four blood vessels do you see all the red blood vessels these are pulmonary veins they carry oxygenated blood from the lungs back into the left atrium and that marks the end of the pulmonary circuit moving on to systemic circuit uh, movement of blood from the left side of the heart to the um, to different parts of the body back to the right side is defined as systemic circulation and we will go uh, go through the structures involved in systemic circulation step by step okay so we will start with the left atrium also from the left atrium so this chamber is left atrium we can see the interatrial septum which is the partition between the left atrium and the right atrium the general muscles are called pectinate muscles and also here we see the fossa ovalis which is not very clearly shown from this angle but you can see the depression uh, fossa ovalis and again to be covered more in the next chapter <coughs> in between the right atrium and the sorry in between the left atrium and the left ventricle we have the bicuspid valve which is this one and the bicuspid valve again it's a unidirectional it allows unidirectional flow of blood and it actually opens into the left ventricle <coughs> the if so blood from here moves into the left ventricle the two ventricles are separated by interventricular septum as you can see <coughs> by interventricular septum and the general muscles of the ventricles are trabeculi carni so these are trabeculi carni here we also see papillary muscles these finger like muscles are papillary muscles and the chordae tendini which are these white cords do you see the white string like structures the white strings are called chordae tendini and they attach the tricuspid valve sorry the bicuspid valve to the papillary muscles now the if you look at the left ventricle <clears throat> if you look at the left <clears throat> i'm a little mucusy today if you look at the left ventricle look at the muscle it's way thicker right thick muscles of the ventricular wall and this is probably because the left ventricle will pump blood into the aorta which will get distributed throughout the body and no wonder the left ventricle has to pump hard to push blood to different parts of the body that's why it has a thicker musculature now i'll stop here and then start with a new video